Hi, Matt. Hi, how are you? I'm getting a little touch up. I've been under the lights for a minute. I get it. I get it. It happens. Maybe Does I should. It feel like that fried chicken, you know, at the restaurants that just has the like, the light that's trying to keep it warm and you're like oh it's not looking as good as it did this morning i know they gotta roll you over every now and then and kind of base the other side <laughs> that's me <laughs> oh well thanks for your time today i appreciate you chatting oh my god thank you for having me yeah and congratulations on getting the film made i think a lot of people just assume hey you want to make a film make a couple of calls write a check boom you got a film but there's so much that goes in you know as well as anybody so congratulations on just getting it done Thank you for recognizing that because it is a miracle that anything gets made. If you knew how many movies I've tried to get made that did not get made, it, you know, breaks my heart. And I'm just absolutely just tickled that we have an actual movie and that it's coming to theaters. Like this actually happens anymore. I thought only Marvel movies went to theaters. So it's really blowing my mind. <laughs> Yeah, you know, and we're post pandemic, so people can go see it and you can hang out and have a party. It's just, I don't know, life is good right now for movies. Good. Life is good. It's, it's, I'm, I'm going to go to San Francisco and see it with my family. My dad has not seen it, so that'll be interesting. Um, well, okay. <laughs> my brother has not seen it, so it's going to be, that will be weird. Uh, any suggestions for how, should I get drunk or should I get them drunk? Or um, I think they, I don't know, both. I think make it a family event. All y'all get a little, <laughs> a little tipsy, maybe sit the row behind them, maybe. You That's know? what I was thinking. Definitely don't want to see any face facial expressions at all. <laughs> yeah. You know, but I think they'll they'll get it the same way we did that I have to admit, going into this movie, I was so surprised how much I teared up before it was done. That opening set and the opening scene and getting an idea of exactly what Nelly was. And then all of a sudden it just you're really good at just like gut punching our soul when we least expected it. So, uh, All I want to do is gut punch souls right and left. <laughs> so um, let's talk a little bit about, because I mean, you wrote it and you acted in it, you directed it. There were so many moments where you were raw and vulnerable. Talk about writing those moments compared to actually physically having to act those moments. Because I think writing some, a character that's raw and vulnerable would be one thing, but when you have to do it yourself and be that open, Kind of yeah. talk about that transition a little bit. I It was a pretty quick transition because I wrote it and I was very demanding. I was like, we're shooting it this summer. I'll shoot it with my friends if I have to for $5. Because as you know, once you sell it to a studio system or once you go into development, good luck. Good luck. The, the analogy I always use that I haven't told on this round is that I say indie film is like a group of people and they're trying to cross the Atlantic in a little dinghy boat, right? And some are not, they're going to be thrown over. They're going to die of famine if the boat ever makes it, right? We don't know if anybody's surviving. The boat might just roll up on a coast somewhere in the wrong country. But, you know, there's a chance. And then studio film you're eating lobster and you're drinking champagne on the Titanic. So it's like, where do you want to go? Choose a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and I was sort of like, I'm not getting on the Titanic this time. Not with this one. I can't lose it. It's very particular, but I felt really, because it was coming from this really um, uh, headstrong, rebellious place of I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it my way and I'm not going into development. I'm not taking notes and I'm going to judge it and I'm going to star and I'm going to keep it tight and scrappy with my friends and they'll protect me. I felt really brave because I was coming from the, I was, I was having my Jerry Maguire manifesto era, right? Right. But it wasn't until I wrapped the film and I started to watch the footage and I started to realize that now's the part where you mold it into something that you have to share. <laughs> that I started to kind of panic and go, oh God, oh God. I really went there in a way that maybe my saving grace was that I wasn't thinking of the next phase. I was just trying to make something raw and honest, like the filmmakers that I admire, Lena Dunham and Julia DeCorno and I just want to be really brave like they are. And I sort of 
faked it till I made it. And then, and then in the editing room, I had to sort of uh, buckle up a bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, there's so many turning points for Nellie as we watch her journey. And like I said, it's, it's, you balanced really well. I said this in my review, you balanced uh, humor and mourning so well in this that neither one was overdone. And it really helped us as viewers to kind of go along with Nellie on this journey uh, that was really, really spectacular. So first of all, I want to apologize for all the men in the world. I didn't know it was that hard to date guys. I mean, if that's what we're offering you, I'm sorry. I really am. So, <laughs> you know, it's like, I didn't right. realize it was that bad. It can be. Oh yeah. Oh yes, it can. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about, this is an opinion question before we get out of here and have to wrap, because there's so much that happens in this movie with Nellie. Do you think, and this is just strictly opinion, but the movie made me think about this, that social media is so vital to how people view themselves and the pressure that they feel to do something like, you know, watching your friends get married, watching all the posts online, you know, seeing what everybody else is doing with their life. Do you feel like that adds the pressure to people like Nellie to, oh my gosh, I got to make a move? Yeah. In many ways, I feel like it's this tool for comparison because it, it's an onslaught and you can check in on all these people's lives and see the ways that you're, you're really just seeing the highlight reel. And it's really easy to feel like you have been left behind or that you're failing in some way. I mean, my Instagram is no different. It's the highlight reel. I try to get a little bit more real with it sometimes, but, but then, you know, it's this balance of also work colleagues are seeing this and it's a constant battle for me internally, but and I don't know how I feel about social media, because in some ways, I think it's epic that we can keep tabs of people that we grew up with and live in completely different countries then. And, and you get to sort of just watch people's milestones and, and watch their children grow. And so there's like, in some ways, there's this beauty in that connection. And in some ways, it feels so um, inorganic and inauthentic that are you really keeping up with them at all? I don't know. I don't have the answers, but I will say it's a huge tool for comparison that I think causes a lot of people a lot of pain, for yeah, sure. It, it's a balance for sure that we have to do. Well, again, it was a great film. I always applaud indie filmmakers for staying the hell off the Titanic and doing it with a group of friends in the indie direction. So applause to that. It's a great film. Wish you good luck with it and uh, can't wait to see what you do next. Thank you so much, Matt. Thanks for you talking. Yeah, take care. Bye.